G'day. You'd have to be living under a rock or something to have not heard about the abysmal failure that is Modern Warfare 3. Uh, Modern Warfare 3 2023. The writing was on the wall for me already given how much of a downgrade Modern Warfare 2022 was when compared to well, what I remember to be the excellent entry of 2019. I've seen a lot of people who are convinced that Modern Warfare 3's multiplayer is the best it's been in years and that 2019 was overall a rather crap entry. Changes to the minimap and expanding the maps into something other than three empty lanes with the occasional window definitely confused people, but was the entry as a whole really that bad? What does playing Modern Warfare in 2023 even look like given that historically the games usually become rather dead after only a couple of years? Well, the first step is installing the game. Warzone is still a mandatory component, so that's almost 70 gigabytes taken up already. Campaign adds an extra 31, multiplayer a whopping 50, Spec Ops 11, and only two gig for survival. I assume Spec Ops and survival share most of the same data, but every other choice is almost like it's an entirely separate game that you're installing. Okay, now we can get started with the multiplayer. After a crash on first boot, of course. My go-to modes in any COD title has always been your team deathmatch, your domination, uh, basically multi-life modes, but I've always played hardcore. And surprisingly, I found a couple of hardcore matches. I had to contend with 200 ping and my second match had me mostly stuck at 30 FPS for some reason, but to see people still playing it was great. Gunfight had a similar issue where my ping was through the roof and my frames were super low. This is the 2v2 game mode where each team is given the same loadout. Every two rounds the loadout switches. Very fun, but not when you're at sub 30 FPS. Ground War performed perfectly fine. The match was found super quickly, but I never enjoyed the game mode, so I didn't spend much time playing it. This was the Battlefield-like mode featuring large maps and a total of 64 players as well as vehicles. I don't think it ever really reached the same level of fun or chaos as even the worst Battlefield entries, but it was nice to see the devs try expanding into some new territory. Reluctantly, I booted up Core and found matches very quickly, and they were even in my region. Though the FPS issues still occurred in some of the matches I played, on release the game was definitely buggy, but I never experienced these FPS issues and it doesn't happen all the time so I'm not even sure how to go about fixing it. When it's working correctly though, it's a lot of fun. Some of the maps cop some flack for having too many spots to hide. The introduction of doors seemed to increase anxiety in people as it opened up more camping opportunities and there were terrible spawning issues. But overall, I loved the direction they went with for the map design. I didn't like them all and I definitely had problems with some but I really enjoyed the clutter and loved that we were no longer restricted from climbing on objects taller than our waistline. Being able to climb on so many things helped introduce a lot more possibilities for moving around the map and finding vantage points. Yeah, you might encounter some annoying campers, but that's an online multiplayer issue, not a Modern Warfare 2019 issue. Hiding spots aren't as infinite as I imagine some people thought on release. I think some were just not used to having options be a feature in Call of Duty. For a lot of years, map design was fairly basic and linear. Gameplay still feels as nice as I remember too. With this game came a new engine that, while still offering a familiar feel overall, improved the shooting immensely by making guns feel tight, sound amazing, and look wonderful with very sexy animations. The sound in particular went a long way in immersing players into the game and ringing our ears with the excellent weapon sounds. On release, there were some major issues with footsteps, but in the campaign, the sound design was so good, you could pinpoint voices across multiple floors of a building, as showcased here in the Clean House mission. Oh, 
Ray Tracing for Shadows was brought in for this title, but it honestly doesn't do much that you're going to notice in the moment. You really have to pick your spots to do a side-by-side -side comparison, so I wouldn't recommend it personally. Movement-wise, you could do some slide cancelling and bunny hopping, but I never felt as though these were overpowered ways to move about that gave you an edge in the midst of combat. I don't recall the animations that played for the other person making it harder for you to be hit or anything like that necessarily. The real meta just came from jump peeking corners and getting that peeker's advantage. Throw dead silence on your loadout along with perks to not appear in the minimap and you would need some insane reaction times to shoot first at someone literally getting the jump on you. This aggressive playstyle is the one I used for most of my time with the multiplayer and it worked wonders for getting the drop on players trying to camp as well as catching other players off guard. I'm taking a break from competitive shooters at the moment, but I honestly wouldn't be opposed to playing more multiplayer, even though core seems to be the only way to get populated games with decent ping. And I didn't even encounter any cheaters, which used to be a major issue I'd run into with older titles once they got to about two years old. Spec Ops made a return with this entry and it was only okay. It would be a lot better with friends and it would also be nice if it didn't crash, there's also special operations that are essentially objectives in the Warzone map, but it's unplayable without a team. There is no option to play them solo. Survival is pretty self-explanatory, fight waves of enemies, upgrade weapons, and buy killstreaks in between rounds. Of course, I picked Crash as my map for this one because it is still the best map ever released in the series. Righto, onto the campaign. What stood out immediately when I first played this, and still stands out, is how the game tries to immerse you as much as possible. You've already got an improved animation system and incredible visuals, but many missions also change your movement speed to match your teammates and the general vibe of whatever you're doing at a given time. It never felt like any moments overstayed their welcome either. There are some gimmicks to help break up the pacing and introduce a bit of variety, such as using cameras to guide someone to safety and the obligatory sniping segment, but none lingered for too long or felt out of place. Some of the bigger scale missions even feature a bit more freedom in your positioning on the battlefield. If you feel like flanking a position to take the high ground, chances are that the opportunity will be readily available for you, depending on the level you're playing. Everyone praised the clean house mission on release, but my personal favorite was, and still is after this other playthrough, Going Dark where you're tasked with searching for a high value target and you're given free reign as to which building you want to approach and how. This was the final moment in my first playthrough that really cemented the game as a bit of a classic for me. But maybe I'm a little biased for open sandbox type levels given that the Hitman games are some of my most favorite and the approach to the level design and mission structure in this really reminded me of those games. All in all, it's still a very solid campaign that feels perfectly paced until you engage with the AI. They seem to have zero programming beyond shooting and moving along a predetermined path. All games have scripted AI, yes, but in COD specifically, it never felt like there were variables coded into these enemies. It's not uncommon to watch them stand in the open or hold position and spend an uncomfortable amount of time trying to decide if they're going to advance on you or not. The difficulty levels don't impact AI behavior either, so if you want a challenge, the natural choice would be veteran or realism, which is veteran without the HUD. Realism is great for the lack of HUD elements and helps to increase the immersion, but the issue with veteran and even hardened is how unfun the combat becomes when you're so easily lasered and killed. It's challenging in the same way facing a cheater in Escape from Tarkov is a challenge. Most deaths do not feel fair and you're less able to engage in the game's systems. Regular is about what you'll want to pick then to ensure fairness, but the issue that comes with that is you don't have the lack of HUD elements. You can't actually remove them from the options menu. So if you want that fully immersive campaign, you miss out on that and that really sucks. I really wish this new engine came with a drastic overhaul of enemy behavior and actions so that COD can finally resemble AI from over 20 years ago. Another aspect of the campaign I dislike greatly is the story. 
if we go over it beat by beat without thinking about it, it's serviceable. The US are trying to put a stop to the Russians developing a dangerous gas. A rogue band of freedom fighters from the Middle East steal it with the intention of driving away their Russian invaders with the gas. The main freedom fighter group led by Farah fights the Russians but sees anyone who uses the gas as their sworn enemy. And then you've got Captain Price who leads a unit that pretty much operates off the books to help fight the Russians whilst searching for the gas. Perfectly okay story if you intend on telling it as a simple one side versus other side story. The issue with the story in this game though is that the writers of it are honestly complete cowards. So much promotional stuff for the game and part of its whole marketing was framing the idea of getting your hands dirty in order to keep the rest of the world safe and there were even IGN videos where some of the weaker employees spoke about how confronting the game supposedly was. I think the most confronting part of the game was when you're playing as Farah and have to push debris off of yourself after being involved in an explosion in a building and you come face to face with your dead mum. I kind of wish the whole section was just a cutscene instead of having me press buttons because then you're gamifying an otherwise effective scene. And then it gets a little bit more ridiculous when you have this little stealth section with a Russian troop. This is about as confronting as the game gets. The story presents Sergeant Garrick as someone who wants to be told where the enemy is and for the chain of command to turn a blind eye so they can do whatever is necessary to get the job done. But the story in general is a very much yee-haw America saves the day kind of story. The good guys are so unequivocally good and capable that the most evil thing they do is point an empty gun at a known terrorist's family. Even during this moment, the terrorist who received a bit of a beating, so you know, you could be like, oh, they're torturing someone, that's a bit dodgy, but the person they lightly torture is shown earlier gunning down civilians and even shoots a kid, which they don't even have the balls to show completely. So it's not even like Price and his team are resorting to torturing someone with info who is otherwise innocent. The real life highway of death, which occurred in 1991, is reframed in this game as an event carried out by the Russians. While playing as Pharaoh, you play a waterboarding minigame complete with encouragement from your torturer. I'll make it Other way. Not that way, Damn, you're good. Still. During the clean house mission, you'll immediately fail if you kill the wrong person basically negating any and all tension and feelings of disgust that should come with making the wrong choice in a game that's supposedly uncomfortable and pushing buttons. Something the Piccadilly level actually gets right by not failing the mission immediately if you accidentally shoot a couple of civilians amongst the chaos. Speaking of that particular mission, at the end of it we see a man with a bomb strapped to him. I just need to rant about the purpose of the scene real quick because the explosion is tiny when you think about it. It doesn't even completely explode the second floor that Price and Garrick are standing on. There are only a few people in the room with the guy. So what reason do these terrorists have to strap this bomb to someone instead of just shooting all these people in the head? To me, it seems like the entire purpose was just to have some sort of shock moment that works for gamers that are playing an M-rated game for the first time in their life, but if the writers weren't complete cowards, they would put the man's daughter in this scene with him. Instead, when he says he just wants to see his girl, I just roll my eyes and feel nothing. Not to say I'm an unfeeling monster, I cried during your name. Fuck me, I tear up when the right song hits me in the soul. I just think this particular scene and a lot of others throughout this game are the developers attempts at doing something risque for shock value without having to commit to the bit and actually say something with their game. And that's perfectly fine if you're intending to make a story that is simple with easily identifiable character types and motivations, but when you're having your characters talk about this fine line between right and wrong and show characters utilizing inhumane methods to fight a superior force, well, 
you open yourself up for criticism when those narrative hooks either go nowhere or just do nothing in general. And I'm fully aware of interviews where the developers say they're not trying to say anything with the game, but that only reinforces my opinion that this is a coward's approach to writing. Outside of the story being half assed and the AI being dumb as shit, it's a very well paced campaign that never feels like it overstays its welcome or commits to a certain gimmick for too long. So it's a real shame that these what should be easy to fix issues are so blatant throughout the whole campaign. And this lesson of pacing campaigns well and having missions not overstay their welcome or use gimmicks for too long is a lesson that for some reason is just completely thrown out the window for the sequels. I can't say for certain how much life the game has left in it. I wouldn't necessarily recommend the campaign on its own, but if you're after a solid multiplayer experience or plan to play with a group of friends in either multiplayer or the co-op modes and you're interested in checking out the campaign because you haven't played it before, I truly think this remains a solid choice and one I definitely would return to if I wasn't on that competitive shooter break I mentioned earlier. If you are going to buy it though, just only ever buy it on sale. That's it for me and until the next video, have a good one.